Republican Congressman Matt Gates, a member of the House Judiciary Panel that takes center stage on Wednesday. Good evening, Congressman. Good evening. The Speaker has said she's prayerful. You heard that. And now there's a purpose under heaven to this as well. Well, I would say that the Speaker should be praying for better poll numbers in swing districts. I was with Brad Parscale, the president's campaign manager, last evening, and he was giving the president excellent news about polling we've seen specifically from no major party affiliation voters in swing states. They are visiting their anxieties and concerns about government on House Democrats who are focused on their own political ambitions rather than the needs of the country, like passing the USMCA, reforming our mm -hmm. asylum laws, getting an infrastructure bill passed. This is the work left undone. This is the opportunity cost of impeachment. All right. In fact, I want to play the clip that I promised to play. This is a New Jersey district where a Democrat was facing a constituent watch. For the last couple of years, all that has been going on is investigations. And it's keeping us away from the work in our country. <laughs> to many of us, there appears to be nothing there. When you listen to the, when you listen to the witnesses, nothing has been proven. Are you going to ask questions? We'll have a right to ask questions. And what I ask from you is to be respectful. So there's the congresswoman. She wants to be respectful. We wanted to play both sides of a congressman and give you a chance to react. You're a Republican, obviously. That the beginning part, that these are endless investigations, you heard pretty big applause. But then the idea that nothing's been proven, there were a lot of people who were skeptical of that. I think there'll be a lot of focus on litigating the individual circumstances and pieces of these phone calls and records. But at the end of the day, I think voters are concerned about their own needs, their own challenges, their own opportunities in their lives. And if you look at the Trump economy, the hottest in the world, it's creating that opportunity for Americans each and every day. And so I think that, that Nancy Pelosi and other House Democrats overestimated the extent to which whatever allegations they're making about the Ukraine really are central to the decisions made by the people who are our bosses. You talk about decisions. The president has a big one, as well as his legal team, to make in the next few days. As you know, he has until Sunday evening to decide whether or not he's going to send counsel to the committee where you sit next Wednesday. What would you suggest to the president? What's the sense you're getting about whether or not he's going to send his lawyers up there? Uh, I don't know. I would, I would probably leave that to the great team they have in the White House Counsel's Office. I will say that we continue to see inequities in the process in the Judiciary Committee. We would like to call minority witnesses. And here's why, Ed. If we can prove that the president's questions about Hunter Biden, about Burisma, were legitimate, that they mm -hmm. were well-founded in what our diplomatic corps and what other professionals believed, then it can't possibly be this, you know, this shakedown that Adam Schiff and, and Nancy Pelosi are spewing to the American American people, and so that's why getting that exculpatory evidence into the record is so important. What witnesses and today, are going to have? We've gotten no authorization to do it. What witnesses? Well, Hunter Biden would be yeah. would be uh, probably one of our top witnesses. I think the whistleblower would be a witness, and I think that others who can uh, expound on the testimony of George Kent mm -hmm. that reflect on the concerns with Burisma and the ingrained corruption with that company. George Kent certainly, as you say, testified under oath that in 2015 he told Vice President Biden's office, "There's a conflict here," and they essentially blew it off. But I want to press you on something. Thing. You just said, I, I don't know, it's up to the White House whether or not they're going to bring up counsel. You and other Republicans have been saying for weeks the president's not getting due process because his counsel hasn't been there for the depositions in the basement, that, as you say. So why now are mm -hmm. you not demanding that his counsel go up there as you've been promising for so long? Do you want it? Well, well Look, if I if, look, if I were uh, in their shoes, that's probably the decision I would make. You know, I am not entirely apprised as to the waivers that that could cr 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 potentially create within the White House Counsel's Office. But you know me, Ed, I like being on the field. I think we show up, we ask our questions, and even if the process is unfair, we have to show uh, just the country uh, what a terribly divisive and unproductive endeavor this is. Last question uh, on uh, this New York Times story that Democrats are jumping on that mm -hmm. says the president was briefed on the existence of the whistleblower's complaint before he released that aid. And, and their contention, as you know, and we're going to hear about this a lot on Wednesday at the judiciary hearing, is that the president, after hearing about the complaint, knew he got caught, and that's why he released the aid to Ukraine. What say you? 
Uh, Ed, if you're ever accused of holding a hostage for ransom and you're not doing it, it's always a good idea to probably release the alleged hostage. I mean, in this case, if the president was so incensed with the notion that someone would even make the accusation that there was conditionality here when there wasn't, it would only be the right and appropriate thing to do to show that there is no conditionality, there was never any sort of dirt for, um, you know, for mm -hmm. arms uh, narrative like the Democrats have laid out. Congressman, we appreciate you previewing what the Republicans are going to be saying Wednesday at that big hearing, and have a great Thanksgiving with your family. Thank you. You as well, Ed. All right.